Storm Team Weather with Chief Meteorologist Nancy Dignan. Well, once again, we are talking Faye. Faye is just slowly working its way toward the west. There you can see the center of circulation, and this is where Cedar Key is. So it's about 50 miles to the north of there. It's slowly moving at about five, six miles per hour toward the west. We have had where you see the yellow and the orange, some of the heavier bands of rain moving through. Right now, and you saw this on our weather cam from above the double tree that uh, yeah, heavy rain going on downtown Tallahassee. So there have been kind of spurts of it. It's been steady, and then in some time, at some times, we have had some heavier rain showers going on. Also notice some of the bands moving through South Georgia, so they're not immune from the effects as well, simply because it's such a big system at this point. Red box indicating a tornado watch in effect till 6 p.m., expecting that to be extended to the west and perhaps over a longer period of time. But this is what we're watching. Now, so far, everything has been offshore around our coastline, only because of the circulation being two hours southeast, but as it works its way toward the west, winds will start to come onshore first for Dixie, then Taylor counties, then of course coastal areas of Jefferson County. As we head through the early morning hours of tomorrow, let's say 6 to 8 a.m., we're talking about the center being perhaps over Gulf County, and that will bring an onshore flow to Wakulla and Franklin counties as well. So things to be thinking about. A little after 6 is when we're expecting high tide, especially around St. Mark's. Those are the positions as we head out over the next several days. Again, a tropical storm warning in effect all along our coast. In fact, as far west now as Destin had been a watch in some locations, but this thing hasn't fallen apart, even though it has crossed land. So in a similar sense to what it was doing as it crossed over the peninsula, holding together pretty well. In fact, the last advisory coming in from the Hurricane Center, 45 mile per hour sustained winds, gust to 60, and there's that west motion at about six miles per hour, 79 miles east, slightly southeast of Tallahassee, and again, steadily moving toward the west. That should be the overall motion, perhaps a little bit of a jog north or south, but that may allow for it to skim the Appalachian Bay, Crossover and one more time crossover land on the Florida coastline this time around Franklin County and then gosh you would hate for it to move back out into the Gulf and then skim along and then push ashore near Pensacola but there is that possibility as well slight deviation but all along the path we're looking at some heavy rainfall amounts again already we have seen reports of about three to six inches so as we continue to add another 24 to 36 hour total to that we will, by the time all is said and done, be counting out something along the lines of 6 to 12 inches and hopefully not the kind of rainfall that they have seen across central Florida. But here's the bigger view, and you can see that spiraling circulation working its way toward us. And again, still a very broad system, though not very, very powerful. The front has moved away, high pressure drifting down as it does, so that's helping to steer it toward the west, and that's what we're expecting. Now, I think also, as the center gets a little bit closer to us, that's where the winds are a little bit stronger, so we'll start to see some gusts tonight. If you have some things that are outside and they're loose, bring them in before they start blowing it around and start causing perhaps some damage. Those are the easy things to prevent from happening. So tonight, on the Gulf Coast, all craft should remain in port. Southwest and southerly winds, look at that, all the way up to almost 45 knots. Seven to nine foot seas, very rough for the bays and inlets. Inland, tropical storm conditions as well. Wind and rain, heavy at times with gusts inland, a little less than what we'll see at the coastline. It looks like those conditions will continue tomorrow as well. Again, we're looking for several inches of rain again in the afternoon hours. So the wind and the rain are with us. If you don't have to be outside, don't. If there is ponding on the road, stop, turn around. You know, we always say turn around, don't drown kind of thing. Of course, the barriers will be out so that you can't head down those roads, but that's probably the most dangerous aspect to a slow moving and a weaker system that we think, ah, it's just a tropical storm. And it's only a little bit of rain, but that little bit of rain has a very, very powerful force. And we are along the coastline, so we got a lot of things to watch. And yes. I guess tomorrow morning you had mentioned is going to be the worst for storm surge. Yes, I believe that uh, somewhere between probably 5 and 9 a.m., but I'm looking more toward the 6 and 8 a.m. Because 6 o'clock a little after is when we have the high tide, and that will time out with that southerly wind. So that'll be very dangerous. Okay, so certainly we will stay tuned for those updates, Nancy. Thank you. Airing on the side of caution. And, and rightfully so. And let me just kind of reflect a little bit here about the weather, because we were talking, I'm going to say Tuesday about the fact that Tropical Store Allison had produced the greatest amount of rain that we had ever seen in a single day. That was 10.13 inches. We're above that. Yeah. So any of you that remembers 2001, you remember the water overflowing at Lake Ella. You remember all of the streets. We are easily rivaling that and then some. And the story is not going to be done today or tomorrow when the rains end. The story next week, of course, will be the rivers and how they are expected. And they'll be well over bankful at you know the cresting at the st uh, flood stage. So this is going to be with us for a while, at least the effects of it.
Our impressive and major hurricane is now a Category 1 storm. In fact, you can see it just kind of staying on the south side of Cuba, barely out into the Caribbean. And as it kind of hugs the coastline, there's some interaction with land. This is, of course, very mountainous terrain, so that is helping to really disrupt the circulation. All of that's some really good news, but we still are thinking that it's going to head back into the Gulf of Mexico, where in the southeastern Gulf, there's just a very warm pocket of water and conditions are favorable for it to restrengthen. As to how strong it gets, we're going to have to wait it out, but here's the latest coming in from the Hurricane Center at 5 o'clock, 21.4 north, 79.7 west. There are the winds, 80 miles per hour. That's why it's a Category 1 storm moving to the west at about 14 miles per hour. Now watch what happens. Put this in motion. We're thinking that westerly motion will continue, but back over that warm pocket, looking for it to strengthen, possibly back to a Category 3 storm, which starts out at 111. Top end would be 130 miles per hour. Then we think it's headed more toward the western Gulf Coast. Now, of course, this is our cone of error. We could see it shift a little bit farther to the east or to the west. In any case, it does look like it'll stay away from the eastern Gulf Coast. So we're going to pay attention anyway. We do know that the outer periphery has got that big circulation. So we're going to see some breezy conditions, I think, as we head through tomorrow. And at the coastline, we could see some riptides and, of course, some minor flooding there as well. Now, meanwhile, for us, we've had some pretty dry conditions this afternoon. So it's been warming up. In fact, low to mid 90s. Check out Perry up to 95 degrees, 91 across city Tallahassee right now, 90, 91 in Bainbridge. Moultrie seems to be one of the cooler spots, 88, same temperature in Waycross. Valdosta also hanging on to 90 degrees. So how about that rain? Well, again, we've got that big counterclockwise circulation, so you can see some of the bands of showers and thunderstorms rotating through the Keys and kind of nipping the southwestern side of the peninsula of Florida. This will be the trend overnight tonight and probably through the next couple of days. We'll get a few bands kind of move through. They'll get a burst of rain and also some wind and then a little bit of a break. So that's what happens when you're on the outside of the storm. Closer, of course, you get that onset of rain and wind with no breaks. Now for us, we're also seeing the steering of some of these showers. Notice that they're moving basically from the southeast toward the northwest. So they'll rotate up and through the Tallahassee area. Meanwhile, I've seen some clouds off and on across the region, but the big steering mechanism for everything tropical seems to be the water vapor imagery. We've had a big bend. That's what we call a trough. We thought they would kind of come together. That's why the steering had it closer to us last week of Ike. But this time we're watching some high pressure build in with that big high and that clockwise flow looking like that's going to help to steer it more toward the west. So on our weather map, got a couple of fronts. This one buckling and becoming stationary. The second one is a more powerful type of cold front, and that as it drops down toward the southeast will bring some showers along with it, but we think it's going to stay north and not really steer Ike over the next day or so. For us tonight, a couple of showers here and there. Otherwise, mild temperature 74 as we head through the morning hours. Then tomorrow, warming up. Looks like a high temperature right around 93 degrees. Again, just slight chance of rain. But as we head through the next seven days, we're going to bring the rain chances up. Looks like we may get a little more of that influence of tropical air. So about a 60% chance of rain Wednesday and Thursday. Looks like we may back it down as we head through the weekend. But shouldn't see too much of an impact as Ike moves into the Gulf, right? We are very fortunate, and we do need to knock wood for that I because that last week, I mean, it really did look like it was going to have a greater impact on us, so we're very, very lucky. Keeping the fingers crossed. Thanks. Appreciate it. Sports is next. Stay tuned.